Hi, welcome back. So today, this is just another status update to the Pyrocast project, a wonderful name that I come up with uh, using my vast imagination. So let's just get to it. So uh, let's focus you know, on my phone first. Um, I'm having problem focusing um, a close-up shot with a camera phone. Um, but whatever, so let's just continue. So it's a bit fuzzy, but it's basically just saying the Pyrocast name, uh, advertising by the receiver on the far end in the corner um, by the TV. So um, let's just uh, connect. So as you can see, the TV, or rather the, uh, the receiver has received a request and has started processing the, uh, um, the request. So I think it, yeah, so now it's done. So as you can see, it's now um, bridged to my phone. So um, let's just do the regular uh, playback stuff. Okay, I think that's enough for now. So I'm just gonna put this aside. Um, so there's a couple things I wanted to talk about. Um, so my wife always makes me take notes, so we don't need to do multiple takes. So um, there is a clock difference. So obviously these are two end points, right? So you have the phone acting as the transmitter, and then you have the Pi acting as the receiver. Uh, there may be clocks used between the two. So I have to um, do some speed up and slow down depending on the current low level or the jitter buffer level on the receiver to accommodate for this. So fortunately, the OpenMax, uh, what is it? Yeah, the OpenMax API um, provides these kind of control to allow me to do that. So the playback could be seamless. Um, right, so previously I was experiencing random random frame drops. So it turns out that, so I looked and I have to look into it. So it turns out that the default uh, Net core provided by the Raspberry and uh, variant of Linux only has 160 kilobytes uh, for its internal for the kernel buffer, I believe. So I have to bump that up to around two megabyte-ish because um, this streaming right now is roughly eight to ten megabit per second. Um, as I indicated in an earlier video, you can find out this number by doing a Wireshark trace and then the statistical analysis would, would show that it's about eight to ten megabits. So 160 kilobytes is probably not sufficient. Um, so I had to bump that. Um, one thing, oh, so, oh, what happened? Oh, right, okay. So you probably noticed that the uh, the playback on the phone versus on the playback on the TV has a huge delay. And that's actually intentional. Um, what I found is, um, so I need to track this now. So, so one, um, audio from the sword from the phone seems to be delayed by uh, 400 milliseconds. I don't know why. It seems like it's delay generated by the source. On top of that, um, every minute there is an exact 500 millisecond jitter on the dot. Um, I spent quite a while trying to track that down and I thought it's something on my application or on the receiver or even Linux itself. Um, but it turns out that I think it's, again, from the phone, I had to do a Wireshark or a TCP dump on the receiver and then to, to find out that every minute there's a half a second of jitter. And I'm not sure why that is. Um, so it means there's an implementation fault. So to smooth that out, I need to basically increase the jitter buffer by quite a big margin, a lot more than, well, a bit more than half a half a second to tolerate for that, right? So so like the, that half a second plus the previous uh, mentioned uh, 400 milliseconds, that's roughly a second of delay. Um, I don't know why the source is doing that. Um, maybe there's some configuration that I could do. But to get a smooth playback, that's what needs to be done. Um, so, oh, and another 
definitely am not quite happy is uh, you probably noticed that your black borders of uh, because this let me just go back a little bit. Yeah, so like this black border. Um, I haven't quite figured out what that is either. Um, I look into the open Mac source code, I look around the internet, it seems like um, I'm doing everything right. I'm positioning the playback starting at the top left corner at 00, zero offset 00, zero. Um, but it's still there. Um, I guess what I need to do next is probably save it and do a playback in BLC and maybe the border is sent by the source again. So I do track that out. Um, oh, so one last thing. So as smooth as everything seems to be working, the, uh, the session initiation process, so the first uh, thing you saw on the session connect portion of it is still actually quite fragile. Um, unfortunately, I have very limited control over that because it just results into Basically, what I'm doing is issuing command line calls into the driver, and the driver sometimes barks on me, and sometimes it crashes, sometimes it freezes the system. Um, so I need to track that down. It doesn't seem to work quite reliably, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, so I need to spend more, a little bit more time um, looking into that. So again, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and see you next time.